I'm calling them acousticeuticals uh -huh. because we have the ability to li literally, you know, change our states and our health with these low cost, non-invasive methodologies, which of course, Hemisync is, you know, is part of, of that whole concept of, yeah. of acousticeuticals. Hey everyone, it's Garrett here. Uh, very excited to be talking to you about our new Hemisync album entitled Alpha and Omega, A Peaceful Beginning and End of the Day. It's about going into and out of sleep. Um, it's the brainchild of our longtime uh, Hemisync collaborator, Barry Goldstein. He's known for albums such as Cosmic Consciousness, Wisdom of the Heart, Your Heart Song, Pieces of Heaven, uh, Journey into Your Heart. Um, he's worked with many of the leading self-help figures of our time, including Dr. Joe Dispenza, Neil Donald Walsh, uh, Dr. Dan Amen, Anita Morjani, Lee Harris, um, and in more uh, mainstream musical pursuits, uh, Barry co-produced the Grammy-winning 2005 album, 69 Freedom Special, with the iconic Les Paul. At the end of the conversation, we'll play you a couple samples, two of them, uh, from the album, so stay tuned for that. Um, this is not a, a numbered pod, but it is a very interesting and informative q and I hope you like it. Uh, here is Barry Goldstein. Barry, good to see you. Welcome back once again. Uh, really excited to be putting out Alpha and Omega with you, a peaceful beginning and end to the day. Um, you know, I think this is interesting for us because Hemisync has done a lot of kind of long form sleep pieces over the years, pieces mm -hmm. that you're designed, you know, literally to sleep with. Uh, this is a different approach. Um, tell us a bit about it. Yeah, well, the two probably most important times of your day, and which is a cycle of how you start your day and how you end your day are just critically important in terms of managing stress levels, um, your ability to have energy that um, is used for creativity and your long term mission and vision. Like these are a lot of the go to's for me of like why I create music is how can I help people manage their energy more effectively so that they, they have more time to do what they're here to do. They're here for their dharma, so to speak. And I think uh, with the fast paced world that we're living in today, we tend to neglect the startup and wind down process of our day and are just shifting right into, and, and I'm sure you're familiar with this, into high beta. Yeah. You know, we're, we're missing out on all what I call the, you know, the spiritual gumbo. Yeah. So when we wake up in the morning and you're coming out of that beautiful Delta state, you know, you're right in that bridge of, yeah. you know, of that sweet spot where, you know, alpha and theta are kind of, you know, moving into your day. And that alt is the ultimate time to not jump out of that, stay in it a little bit longer, you know? Totally. And that's really why um, I created the morning piece Alpha is okay, a half an hour, stay in that space and see what comes through for you um, with all the amazing information you're going to get or just renewing yourself before your day starts. So that was the approach, you know, to yeah. that. And at the end of your day, the other way around, you know, we're so high speed, right, until we're closing our eyes. And again, we're going straight from beta into delta brainwave states. So we're getting up. And, you know, and in the middle of the night, we get to sleep easy because we're so tired, but then we're getting up an hour later because we haven't processed our day. And that wind down process is really, you know, it goes back thousands of years. This is a sacred time where we get to rejuvenate, where our soul gets to renew itself. And that wind down process is just so important of making our, our evening sacred again. So it's really about starting your day in sacredness and ending your day in sacredness. Great stuff. I mean, I can't tell you how many people I know that go straight from like their phone, putting it down, like straight to bed. And like when they get up in the morning, like first thing they reach for on the nightstand is the phone or back on the phone. Like this is insane. Like I see my wife doing it sometimes too. Like, yo, that that's, you, you can't do it like that. Um, but great. So in terms of how the music is actually made, like how do you accomplish this? You know, so for me, I guess even the word like accomplishment is not that much, in, you know, mm -hmm. it's not that much as an artist in my in my mindset. You know, I, I, I base my music off being inspired and connecting to something beyond myself and inviting it in this space like this is this is my 
you know, this is my sweet space. Mm -hmm. Some guys may call it a man cave. So this is like my music cave yeah. where I get to, you know, even, uh, you know, it's 114 degrees here in the summer. This is where I'm hiding out in the space of creativity. So everything starts for me with being inspired by a sound or a concept. And in the case of like mystic, um, mystical morning, I'm mystical morning, I'm sorry. Oh, yes, mystical morning. Yeah. Alpha. Mystical morning, yes. Yeah, Alpha is Mystical Morning. Uh -huh. I wanted something that felt like, you know, that you were coming into a new day, like the sun's coming up. Yeah. There's this shimmery energy and the sparkle of the sun waves are coming in. And you're like, wow, this is like a miraculous day. You know, yeah. what would that sound like? So I started with these like cool harmonics that really felt like they were kind of like rays of the sun, like peeking in through your window. And through that, I just kind of kept layering and uh, until the piece kind of evolved. And uh, you and I talked a great deal about this and, and why we feel that this piece is cool and differentiating in lots of ways, as well as because it's, it's, the, it's amazing, you know, the brain entrainment aspects of what um, HemiSync does. There's no one that does it like you guys, you know, and, and, and in terms of that, I mean, yeah, right. And we've been working together for how long? Uh -huh. Because, you know, you, you know, when you guys, um, when I give you guys a master and then I listen to it back, you know, uh, it's so seamless that it, that it's like, I remember the first time listening to the first master, I was like, are they sure they put in the, the, binary, you know, the hemi sync in this? No, because that's how it good it was, you no, know, no. that's how Make good sure it was. And that's, you know, ultimately a composer, that's what you're looking for. You don't want your, um, you don't want your composition altered. You want it right. enhanced. Right? You yeah. want that vibrational upgrade. So you guys do that, you know, just uh, amazingly with so much integrity. Your engineers are amazing. You know, so anyone who's thinking like, uh, and I know this sounds like a plug, but anyone who's like, oh, I'm just going to go on YouTube and listen to some binaural beats tracks. It, it's not, it's not the same. I'm just going to let you know. These are, these guys have been doing it for 50, 50 years. So, um, so that's why it's such an honor to always work with you. And on my end, a lot of what I do and my mission is geared towards connecting people to their heart. So this is like the perfect marriage because, you know, this is the, this is the hot spot that people have been talking about in the recent two years. But, you know, you and I have been doing this. Uh, I think the first one that we created was in 2007 yeah. was wisdom of the heart and people weren't talking really talking about heart brain coherence then you know mm -hmm. and this is much more recent and we were doing it back then so my approach is yeah we want to slow our brain waves down or target our brain waves we might not want to slow it down but we want to target them mm -hmm. to a specific state and it's the same with the heart and studies have shown that um even if you're just listening to a metronome and a group was done one one group listened to a metronome at 66 beats per minute and the other group didn't listen to anything and just the metronome alone without music at 66 beats per minute brought people to a state where they were no longer in anxiety or they reduced their anxiety mm -hmm. so that's basically the approach we know that the sweet spot is between 60 to 70 beats per minute where our heart moves to a relaxed state and we have the inner metronome of our heart. You know, I call this our inner symphony, our heartbeat, mm -hmm. our breath, all these amazing sounds that we have in our body that literally can adapt to music and tempo. So, you know, while um, brain entrainment is working with hertz, right, or cycles per second, um, with, with the heart, we're looking at tempo, specific tempos. Mm -hmm. And when the heart can actually entrain to that, and we can target those relaxed states. So the sweet spot for this was 60 beats per minute mm -hmm. because that's targeting the heart at a relaxed state to move into your day. And then at night, again, to wind down. And when these two things work together, heart entrainment and brain entrainment, you know, this is what is exciting people in the field of research now. And that's why I think this release is so special. We're calling it neurocardiology. We're mm -hmm. We're finally starting to recognize that there is a relationship between heart and brain coherence. And when the heart is moving to those um, entrained states or those coherent states, it's producing more alpha brain waves. Mm -hmm. 
So it's hard to have one without the other. It's hard to, you know, slow your brain waves down and be in that relaxed state and be in a, a state of stress, you know, and the other way around. So it's not one or the other. It's how can we address both? And that's what this album is doing. It's addressing both of those things. And I think that's what's, um, in addition to the compositions, which are definitely uh, something that I took a lot of time and care and nurturing with to create the perfect soundscapes for morning and evening. I think the combination of the, the technologies together are really powerful. Some really interesting ideas there. Um, so musicians are very familiar with working in beats per minute. You know, if, if you've ever practiced mm-hmm. with a metronome, you know, that that is what you're doing. Um, That's right. and so we're kind of bringing up the concept of oscillation here. We, we're all mm-hmm. oscillators, similar to how, you know, if you put, you know, a bunch of grandfather clocks in a room, within a couple of days, they'll all entrain to kind right. of back and forth at the same rate. Um, so we are human oscillators, biological living oscillators. Um, and you know, you're using 60 BPM in these pieces to entrain the heart while we are, um, you know, sneaking in some hemisync to um, entrain the brain waves. So um, really exciting piece here. Um, now you are well also, put. yeah, well, it's just kind of a different twist of what you all I love it. I love it out there. Um, so you are actually teaching courses based on this now, right, Barry? Yeah, I mean, that's why I want to bring awareness to, yeah. you know, there's a lot of talk about heart coherence. Mm-hmm. And for me, not as much conversation about the role of music in yeah. heart coherence. And I mean, so when we're talking about heart coherence, we're basing it on the fact that when, when we're in these elevated states of emotions like kindness, gratitude, compassion, that our hearts are moving in smooth and orderly rhythms. Mm -hmm. When we're in anger, frustration, uh, shame, guilt, all those lower vibrational um, emotions, then our heart is incoherent and we're able to show that. And ultimately, you know, if you think of your, our bodies as an, as an orchestra and imagine that all the different sections of our uh, our body were different parts of this orchestra and our lymphatic system, our endocrine system, our, our, you know, our heart, all of those systems decided that they just wanted to play music at any tempo that they could, right? And any music that they could, what, what we would hear is something that sounds very dissonant. Mm-hmm. So ultimately, the heart is the conductor of this orchestra. And when it's given a a specific tempo and we have these orderly emotions in combination with that, then we can move in coherence in like really, really short periods of time. You know, like in five minutes, you can, you can move into a, a much more coherent state. What does it more than, or easier than music because it's gonna target those emotional states of love, Mm -hmm. compassion, kindness with the right composition, right? That that, where we know where we're going with that. And, you know, music catches you by surprise. You don't have a chance to create um, a defense system. You know, it's a therapy that we can't really prepare ourselves for. And that's why, you know, I'm calling these now, I don't know if I'll share this with you, but I'm I'm calling them acousticeuticals. Uh-huh because we have the ability to literally, you know, change our states and our health with these low cost, non-invasive methodologies, which of course, Hemisync is, you know, is part of, of that whole concept of, of acousticeuticals. That's also a good way to put it. So the, the music basically sneaks in underneath our radar, you know, underneath all the myriad defense systems that we've set up to, you know, what to, you know, we think protect ourselves, but really it's, you know, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're just kind of building a shell where things that really impact us um, in the way that they should. Um, So great. So um, you're talking about track one alpha and how you were inspired by the um, morning rays of the sun. Um, And indeed, you know, when I listen to it, like the felt sense of it is that it's peaceful, it's bright it kind of feels like it's getting my nervous system ready. Um, how about the second track, Omega, which uh, we're calling the Cosmic Mystic? Yeah, so it, the title kind of says says it really well mm-hmm. because I, I didn't want just your typical, like, you know, 
I, I create a lot of that. You know, I was going to say a typical, more new age music to to wind down with because I've created a lot of music like that. So mm -hmm. I did want to create something a little different that was going to bring in something that felt ancient and mystical mm -hmm. to it because ultimately, you know, the that's that's where I really feel is that void in consciousness right now is we've lost track of the ancient um, the ancient teachings around sleep where we're, we're moving into dream state we're rejuvenating and cleansing our soul we're literally mm -hmm. our soul is cleansing at night so i i wanted it to be peaceful but i also wanted to bring in that sense of ancientness mm -hmm. and a little bit of just like that shamanistic touch where you might hear like um you know a, a flute that brings in the essence of a snake charm or a dudek yeah. or you know, or a shamanistic voice that's a calling to something. Yeah. It's a calling to, although we're winding down to sleep, in many ways we're awakening our our other consciousness, you know, in sleep as well, where we yeah. move to these deep states where we're connecting with our loved ones, right? We're connecting with getting messages and we're connecting with the other part of this track. We're connecting with this big, cosmic energy the infinite field of all possibilities where we're moving outside of our physical body during sleep and we're yep. journeying into not the known but the unknown and that's really the thing we're spending our days in the known there's yeah. so much information out there and there's so much about knowledge but we're not giving ourselves a chance to rest the thinking mind Mm -hmm. and integrate some of that so that it moves into wisdom and that's really the difference you know between the uh, again between a heart's intelligence and the brain's intelligence you know the heart acquires the knowledge and the facts and everything that we know but in many ways the heart is integrating that into practical usage and wisdom mm -hmm. so the second piece is an integration like how can you integrate all that you've learned in your day be grateful for it before you go to sleep. Play it. I, I tell people play it for about an hour, mm. you know, before you're going to bed at night and wind down with it for that half an hour that it's playing for and do that, you know, for 30 days because so many people have um, sleeping challenge. I mean, our country is plagued with insomnia. We have over 75 million people in our country uh, alone who have some type of sleeping challenge. Mm -hmm. So I think most of it is we're not processing our day and you know, looking at, wow, what are the things I have to be thankful for today? What are the challenges that I incorporated that, you know, that um, I learned from today? And taking the time to wind down, um, you know, maybe you want to journal with it or just put those headphones on and, you know, let the hemisync do its thing. And then, you, you know, you'll know what to do. Maybe you want to pick up your journal. Maybe you want to play it again and, you know, get some guidance uh, on it, you know, and, or something, an intention that you want to create for dream state and mm -hmm. really see, see where that takes you. It's really, there are no borders with it. You know, I'm not a prescriptive guy where I'm saying, okay, listen to this and this will happen. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, we learn more from questions than we do from answers. And thus the term that's in questions quest, yeah. you know, for me, I don't know about you, but I, what I'm learning Garrett is the more I, th I know about music, the less I know, you know, that tends to be you true know? about almost everything. Um, yeah. if you are, um, curious and, um, able to remove yourself from the equation, you know, there's a, mm -hmm. There's a whole universe of people out there now, especially on social media, that um, are chasing clout, and they do it by thinking that they know everything. And so they right. are very, they are very prescriptive. You know, kind of the opposite of what you're, you're talking about here. Yeah, but and I think it's, um, you know, I think we're we're having the um, the wrong conversations. Mm -hmm. you know? And I think I think that it's when something becomes too prescriptive, even sound. You yeah. know, we're we're becoming too similar to pharmaceutical companies that are mm -hmm. recommending one thing for one ailment you know we're all different and we're constantly changing vibrationally every day we're you know we're changing vibrationally why would you listen to the same piece of music every day or the same frequency every day you know i think really uh, the, the conversations that we need to have is how um 
finding what resonates with you when you hear a piece of music yeah. and understanding that when you listen to a piece of music that resonates with you, you feel expansive. Right. When you listen to a piece of music that doesn't resonate with you, you feel contracted. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, it's more towards individualized medicine. What you need to listen to one day might be different or your friend recommends to you, oh, you have to listen to this, mm -hmm. you know, because it worked, it worked for them, you know, uh, but, you know, it's like broccoli might be great for me, but if you're allergic to it and it creates hives for you, you know, it's not going to be great, great for you. So, right. Well, so, it's sound is medicine, you know, and that's what we're, we're, we're learning more and more that these guys who talked about all of this, right. From Jimi Hendrix, <laughs> right. To who talked about the power of three, six and nine is going to, you know, as well as Tesla mm -hmm. and Einstein, you know, knew the power of music. Um, Edgar Casey talked about music being the bridge, you know, all of these things are, we're living in this time that all the, we're starting to see all of this come true. Yeah. You know? Really exciting. You know, and I, yeah. And you know, if, because how many, how many, um, you know, how much research have you done since, um, you know, towards, since working with Hemisync, you know, a lot more in the last 10 years than because people are wanting it. Yeah. You know, it's not just uh, pharmaceutical companies doing research studies anymore. It's supply and demand. So the more people want to know certain things, and that's why we're seeing um, music and all this interest in entrainment all of a sudden is because we're moving into a place of, of digiceuticals as well yeah. and therapeutics that are, are in apps. And with that, we're seeing more regulation as well. So it's going to be guys, uh, I think, that, you know, have have been doing this for a while and, or who want to become a master or an expert mm -hmm. in what they're doing that are really going to thrive in this world of, of sound healing now. You know, it's not just about buying a computer and hooking up GarageBand and say, oh, I'm <laughs> just going to create some binaural beats. You know, there are, are times when certain frequencies can be introduced in ways that create dissonance that can can not be helpful at all right. if you don't know what you're doing. Why don't you talk about that a little bit? Because well, you guys, for, you know, well, I mean, in terms of the folks that you know like getting their bi their binaurals for free off of YouTube or where, I mean, I sort of liken yeah. it to some folks. You know, they like coffee, and some people like getting are fine getting their coffee at the gas station, and other people, you know, want something <laughs> right. better, like Starbucks, and then some people want something even a little bit better than that, like I don't know, Stumptown or Intelligentsia or you know, whatever. So, different strokes for different folks, but yeah, it's um, all good. Yeah, there are there are tiers to this. Um, so, well, you know, well put there. Uh, track one is thirty four minutes. Track two is thirty. Uh, perfectly fine to loop them if you feel like you need a little extra time with them. Um, you know, you were touching on something earlier that I think is important to highlight, and that is that you know, people don't have the proper reverence for sleep oftentimes. Because again, you are entering into an altered state. You mm -hmm. are touching a space that is timeless, um, rejuvenative, um, and sacred. Um, so, you know, as you go into this, um, do you have any general thoughts on, say, sleep preparation or sleep hygiene? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you can shut down you know, uh, all your other devices, um, mm -hmm. you know, again, about an hour before bedtime and, uh, you know, stop checking the email. And as you said, stop checking it in the morning as well and m move into that space as well. You know, set an intention that when you're putting this music on that you are creating something sacred. And that doesn't mean you have to listen to every note of it. Mm -hmm. You know, I always compare if, if you light a candle um, in the evening, um, in your room to create a more peaceful sense, you're not going to sit there and just stare at the flame. You know, that, that ambiance is there and it's shifting the room and, and creating a, a more peaceful state. So it's the same thing. It's very Pavlovian, mm -hmm. um, that you start to train yourself. And most people who have had sleeping challenges, it's based on really bad sleeping habit, as you said, for bad sleep hygiene, right, for many years to get into that. So it takes a while to reprogram that. Mm -hmm. But you start to um, play it every night about an hour before bedtime, and you start to condition your body um, to 
move into a more responsive state as soon as you hear it you know and i've had people do that with my music garrett i have had friends who's had a friend whose mom and they lived in harlem and his mom was fighting dementia and all the internal noise harlem's very lively neighborhood was keeping her up at night and so my buddy uh, asked me can i use one of your ambiology cds to help mask out the noise and you know eventually his mom said yes, but initially she's like, I don't need any, you know, I don't need any music, you know, it's not going to help me, mm. right? But as she started playing it every night, she began to ask for her music, uh-huh. you know, it became part of a ritual for her that was re- really helping her. And I think it's the same thing. It becomes Pavlovian, our circadian rhythms begin to um, get reprogrammed. And before you know it, you're, you're, you're sleeping better and sleeping better ultimately you know this is a circle and it doesn't it doesn't always start in the morning right Mm -hmm. if you are getting to sleep better you're waking up better you know if you're going to sleep with less anxiety you're waking up with less worry and you're able to look at it like a clean slate oh my god this is a new day today what am i gonna what do i want to um create in the world today Mm -hmm. you know so the mornings um, I, the morning piece, I think, is about creating intention and how you want to walk into your day. And the evening piece is, uh, you know, it's about processing and integrating your day, releasing the lower vibrational energy of it so that you can move into sleep, st- sleep mm-hmm. in a clearer way. So, again, so that you can, your, your physical body can do what it needs to and your mental, emotional and spiritual bodies can do what they do as well. And I think if, you know, for anyone, um, if you do this for 30 days, I'd love to hear how people are using it in different ways. You, you mm-hmm. probably think of other ways to use it outside of what we're even talking about. You know, I would love to get our community here together and say, hey, can you listen to this and, you know, let us know how you're using it. And if it works for you, is it possible to, you know, play it forward to someone who, you know, who might be able to utilize it um, as well. And I don't think it's, you know, just for, for adults, you know, I think this is great to mm-hmm. use um, for children as well for, you know, to get them peaceful and situated or doing it together with your, you know, with your children or your family at the end of your day or waking up, mm-hmm. you know, and making it um, a ritual to start your day in gratitude, you know, with, with your family. So great. Yeah, so definitely let us know what you guys think about this, depending on where you're listening or viewing this. Uh, you can leave a comment. Um, any uh, closing thoughts here, Barry? No, I'll, I'll just leave you with a, th- a thought that a way that I think about music as well is that music's not just something that's happening to you. Music is something that's happening in you. So mm-hmm. when you're listening to that piece of music, it's resonating with something that's already there within you. And when you can really, you know, on subtle levels connect with the music within you, your heartbeat, your breath on a daily basis, you're going to receive music in a much more powerful way. And, um, you know, I'm um, again, just thankful that I have the ability to collaborate with you on this. I'm, I'm always just in awe of the work you guys are doing, um, the work that Bob Monroe has done and um, you know I'm I'm glad that you're bringing more awareness um, into this into a whole new generation of hemisync users and I just continue to uh, to love collaborating with with you on this likewise very uh, the feeling is very much mutual um, you're always creating great music like in its own right and it always pairs really well with uh, uh, hemisync and uh, we look forward to many more. Um, so Barry's new one is called Alpha and Omega, a peaceful beginning and end of the day. Please check it out. Let us know what you think. Um, we'll see you next time. 